În Cluj celebrăm diversitatea și multiculturalismul. Okay, so looking at you all, you all seem very tired. So I'm going to suggest one thing just to sort of bring your energy level back. So I'm going to tell you all to stand up. So, uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to turn right. You're going to face this direction. And then what we're going to do, we're going to make a little pizza. Huh? So we're going to put your hand on the other person's shoulder. <laughs> Okay, and so what goes in a pizza, you have some dough, so you need to stretch this dough out. So come on, give this other person a little bit. Come on, put your hand into it. We're gonna make a good pizza, huh? So what, go what else goes in a pizza? You need some tomato sauce, so put some tomato sauce there. Yeah. So... So what, who, who likes olives? I like olives. So put some olives in there. So put some olives. What do they put in Spanish pizza? Jam. Jam? Put some jam. Ham on. Some ham in there as well. Yeah? Jam? Really? <laughs> okay. Very good. Feeling better? Uh, my name is Khalid. And I'm from, I'm from England. Well, I'm from the United Kingdom. And I'm absolutely delighted to have been invited here by my dear friend and colleague, Mihai, whom I had the tremendous pleasure of uh, meeting in Budapest, in, as he stated, in a very important study session entitled The Protection of Minorities, which was sponsored by the Council of Europe. Now, what I'm going to be doing today is that um, I'm going to be telling you a little about the organization that I work for. And the organization that I work for, its official title is the Asher Foundation, based on the Royal Forest of Dean. And the reason why it's royal is because the royal family, back many hundreds of years ago, used to go hunting in the forest. Asher comes from the Sanskrit, which means eternal law relating to the nature of existence. But it also comes from the Persian word meaning hope. Yeah, the righteous way. Sorry, I beg your pardon. It means the righteous way or the way of divine justice. And our founder, Zabanu Gifford, an absolutely remarkable woman whom is very much like Queen Elizabeth II. So she comes from a faith that's called Zoroastrianism that came from ancient Persia. And what happened is that a lot of the Zoroastrians who were persecuted in Persia fled to India. And a group of them came about a thousand years ago and they set up what's called the Parsi community. And Zabanu, my boss, she's actually um, Parsi. And she's the one who set up the Asha Center and she gave it the name Asha, the righteous way. And in many languages, in Hindi, in Urdu, in Bengali, it actually means hope as well. And I like to think that at the Asha Center, that's very much what we stand for, to hope in the future. And above all, young people like yourself as well, who are our hope as well, and very much the leaders of tomorrow. Where I come from is an extremely beautiful place. Yeah, is, is one of the most beautiful parts of the United Kingdom. And we have residences for up to 30 people. And the nice thing is, all the residences are named after writers, English writers. So when our participants who come up every month, we get a delegation from Romania as well, uh, you, you listen to them saying, oh, where are you staying? Oh, I'm staying in Charles Dickens. Um, so, and it's quite beautiful, this approach, to actually um, name rooms after writers. And we have five acres of beautiful biodynamic gardens, yeah? So we're on the edge of the forest, and we have five acres of gardens, which in the winter, look, looks absolutely magnificent. J.K. Rowling, who wrote the Harry Potter novels, used to take a walk around here when she was writing Harry Potter. She had a house there. Tolkien used to spend his summer here, in the Forest of Dean. You can understand 
what inspired him to write Lord of the Rings when he's walking around here next to us in the Royal Forest of Dean. We have three major objectives. Our first objective is youth empowerment. We believe that young people are the future. We believe that by empowering them with certain values that we can create tremendous change. Yeah? And so the majority of our work is devoted to empowering young people. At the moment, the majority of people that we work with are above 18, but we do have some from 16 years old as well. But the majority tend to be from 18 to 30. The second, intercultural and interfaith dialogue. One of the most important things we do to bridge differences between people of different faiths, to bring people together, to increase understanding, to contribute to peace and reconciliation in the world as well, is one of, one of the main things that we do. And it's very common for different groups, even religious groups. We're not a religious organization, yeah? But we still get different groups from different faiths who actually hire the ASHA Center because they believe that it's a place that can really create change within people, yeah? Finally, again, one of the most important things that we do is sustainable development. Taking care of needs without compromising the needs of future generations. In other words, what we do today does not deprive the future generations of resources. And that's one of the things that we do. When people come to the Asher Center, they see that the gardens that we have use no chemicals. You know, they're cultivated naturally. We produce our own power. Yeah, we have solar power. We have huge boilers that give you the best showers in the morning, believe me. Yeah, so huge boilers that actually burn wood. Yeah, we actually buy the wood pellets, which to be honest, is expensive to not use conventional electricity, but to actually buy wood pellets costs us money. But we believe that in the long term, by investing in this, we will get a lot back because of the shortage of fossil fuels and other things. <coughs> this is something that um, <coughs> we have in the garden. It's um, on the eco what's called the eco shed, which is a beautiful wooden building. So we must teach our children to smell the earth, to taste the rain, to touch the wind, to see things grow, to, see the, to he hear the sun rise and see something, something, something and the night fall. <laughs> so if you want to find out what it says on the last part, you need to come to the Asher Center, yeah? And maybe help me find it as well. <laughs> The activities that we do, the majority of activities that we do in the international context are sponsored by the European Commission. Training courses, youth exchanges, the European Voluntary Service. If you want to get an idea of how you can travel overseas uh, to volunteer from two months to 12 months, two months to 12 months, isn't it? And have the European Union pay your travel cost, 90% of your travel costs as well as your living expenses as well. Uh, speak to the girls here, they might give you an idea. The European Voluntary Service, youth democracy projects. We also work with people with special needs as well. So one of the things we have is that every week we have young people who are, I don't want to use the phrase mentally disabled because it doesn't sound polite. So we say people with special needs. And what they do is they come to the Asher Center every week to work in the garden. And let me give you an example of how this can be very beneficial. One of the boys, his name is Michael, he, he's always holding his hands like that. He's always very tense. So Rachel, our head gardener, who is a hero to everybody, so she said to me, one of the things that we do is uh, we get him to water the garden using a bucket. And obviously to use the bucket, he has to um, open his fists. Yes, he has to open them up and hold it. So he can clench, but when he holds the bucket, he has to clench it like that, then pour over and then open it again so that he can fill it up again. Simple method, 
but very, very beneficial for somebody who causes anxiety to himself just by clenching his fists. Yeah? But one of the great things about the environment and about working with people with special needs is that it's a place where they can come and be themselves without supervision, where they can feel free within nature. And what we wanted to do in the beginning, back when the foundation was founded in 1996, we wanted to keep it in London. And of course, everybody loves London. Yeah? But you imagine if we did keep it in London, it wouldn't be the same. It, everybody would go in different directions, and of course, because London is so busy. But here they come to the Forest of Dean, they're put together in an environment where they serve each other. So every day, the training courses run for a week for about seven days, and each residence, you know, Charles Dickens, Emily Bronte, etc., they're all divided up into nationalities. So you're not going to be staying with a person from the same nationality. At least we will try to avoid it. So at the beginning, you have that intercultural element where people get to know each other because we put them in mixed nationalities. And I suggest that this is very important, that when you have different groups working together, you put them into mixed nationalities, especially when they're staying where they're staying. Yeah? Mix them up. It always works. But the other thing is, it's a place where they come and dine together. Yeah? Dinner is absolutely fantastic. You'll think you're in Hogwarts, believe me. Yeah? So every day we have a kitchen team, five different people. And these people will come and set the table, they will put the cutlery out, and they will serve everybody else. So it's in that spirit of serving each other that you also develop the bonds between people as well. On top of that, the activities that we do, the activities particularly emphasizing non-formal learning, th using things like theater, simulations, debates and discussions, we find is an effective way of teaching people about things. And the European Union is very keen to emphasize, particularly through the Youth in Action program, it's very keen to emphasize the concept of non-formal learning through brainstorming, through creativity, through basically trying to get them away from the formality of the classroom. And I'm going to show you uh, an example of two projects. The first was called the Tongues of Fire Youth Theater. I'm giving you examples of two training courses. One was called the Protection of Minorities, which we did in December, and another one which we did in April, which was called the Quest for Human Rights. Now, the Tongues of Fire, theater, um, Tongues of Fire Youth Theater received young people from South Africa. And one of the things that we're always keen to do is we want to get people from conflict-ridden countries. Yeah? And we bring them together to the Asher Center to work on a production. But what we found is that theater is a brilliant way, it's a therapeutic way to bring young people together to bridge their differences. And one of the most successful projects that we did is that we received young people from Israel and Palestine, 16 year olds, a group of 16 year olds from Israel and Palestine who came to stay at the Asher Center for three weeks. And as you can imagine, when they first arrived, a lot of tensions were running high. After three weeks, they produced a beautiful production of Arabian Nights where they took back to Israel and they performed in different parts in different towns. And this was hailed internationally as one of the most key things within the Palestinian and Israeli peace process. The other thing that we did, the Tongues of Fire Youth Theatre, what they did is that they came over and they performed what was called an African love story. People from all over the country came to watch it. But I think what was the most impressive is that they went back to South Africa and Nelson Mandela said he wanted to watch it. And they actually went to perform for Nelson Mandela in his own home. I mean, what can you get better than that? The other thing that I referred to are the training courses. 
And training courses, what they are is that they run for about seven days and they run on different topics. So you've got conflict management, developing leadership, protecting minorities, theater for inclusion, sustainable development, religion, and so on and so forth. And what it is is that you have the opportunity to travel to another country for about four to seven days to meet other people from other organizations so that you can sit down together and discuss a particular subject within non-formal learning methods. <clears throat> this is an example of the training course that we did on protecting minorities. And as you can see, that we get young people. We, ha we had a local artist, uh, her name is Jeru, and she does a lot of paintings on violence against women. And can I just say, Jeru is the coolest 70-year-old you will ever meet. And what she does is she tries to encourage people to use art to look at certain themes. So this year she's doing an exhibition of violence against women and how that impacts on people, and particularly in places like India, where, um, two minutes, okay, where they are forced, I can't show my video, where they are forced into marriages, yeah? And she uses art as a medium. The other that we did was called The Quest for Human Rights. Again, using different methods to educate people about human rights. Using games and activities as well. What I believe that you should all do if you want to work towards a society of young people that will foster tolerance, okay? Where you work is particularly important, if you can do so. Locations should foster shared living. They should bring people together. What's also found is if you use a combination of formal and non-formal approaches, it meets the needs of different personalities. Don't forget that intercultural experiences break barriers. We can only change people if they meet different people. If they come together with people whom they see as different, but when they come to meet them, they find that they have very much in common. The values that we perceive as unique to ourselves, we actually find that those values can be truly universal. Encourage pluralistic discourse. Encourage people to talk about different things, to explore, to ask questions. Work with local groups. Be brave. Yeah? Educate for active, un unintimidated democratic citizens. Educate people so that they can freely talk about things.